CENTCOM-1 was launched on February 14, 1963 from Launch Complex 17B at Cape Canaveral. Its goal was to become the first geosynchronous satellite, a satellite in a high 24-hour orbit which requires about as much effort to reach as orbit around the moon. If a geosynchronous orbit is equatorial, it's a geostationary orbit, remaining over the same location constantly, which makes it ideal for communications purposes. SYNCOM-1 did not succeed in reaching geosynchronous orbit, ending just shy with an orbital period of 23 hours and 46 minutes. However, its successor SYNCOM-2 did reach geosynchronous orbit, and SYNCOM-3 finally became the first geostationary satellite, paving the way for Intelsat-1, the first commercial communications satellite in geosynchronous orbit. The rocket for SYNCOM-1 was a Thor Delta, also known as a Delta B. The rocket's first two stages were enough to get to low Earth orbit. Then a solid third stage was ignited to boost to the target apoapsis of roughly 35,786 kilometers. And then once at apoapsis, the satellite was built around a small solid propellant apogee kick motor that circularized the orbit. Basically, SYNCOM-1 was a solid rocket motor surrounded by solar panels and tenai sticking out, and a set of attitude control thrusters that used nitrogen, and a set of positioning thrusters that used hydrogen peroxide. Altogether, the mass of SYNCOM-1 was a mere 68 kilograms. This tiny efficient package was built by the Hughes Aircraft Company. Perhaps most famous in popular culture for the Spruce Goose, Hughes Aircraft would go on to build the surveyor probes to the moon starting in 1966. SYNCOM-1's transponders could only emit signals at 2 watts, and it could only handle one telephone conversation at a time. After the final circularization burn, contact was lost with the satellite, probably because it was not correctly oriented by its thrusters. Eventually, it was spotted by an observatory two weeks after launch in a 37,021km by 34,186km orbit. It was followed by the successful launch of SYNCOM-2 five months later, and then SYNCOM-3 the next year. The market for geostationary communication satellites has since grown to be the most commercially lucrative space endeavor, and the Hughes Space and Communications Company became the largest supplier of those satellites, having built 40% of those in service in the year 2000 when it was bought by Boeing.